Hi everybody, Martin at Flicking Feathers again today and I'm tying Kenny Abram's September Nights Flatwing It's designed to be a mullet imitation but to be honest it'll represent a range of bait fish um, and it swims wonderfully as all of them do the flat wings and it's well worth having in your box at any time of the year not just when the mullet are running so as always I'll put a materials list in the description along with a link to the Patreon page for anybody who wants to support the channel get access to the members only content online tying classes as well as intern into the giveaways alternatively you can like the video, share the video, watch it all the way to the end subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button so you get notified of the new videos and then come and watch them so I've got my hook and my vice, this is a Gamakatsu S10S and this is a 3 aught and I run on some white thread, white 6 aught thread and I'm going to start with my tail platform and I'm grey bucktail now this tail I've got is the only grey tail I have left at the moment and it's very long, it's a shame to use it but what I'm going to do is I'll take some of these hairs, I mean some of these hairs are like 6 inches long I'll grab the longer hairs and try to stroke out the short hairs because the, the stuff that you would normally throw away on this tail are still nice and big, nice and long and I don't need many now they're a bit messy so we'll just sort of try to align them draw these short hairs out It's easier to handle. Length, well, I like sort of with all my flat wings. I sort of like the platform's got to be enough to sort of help combat fouling. And two shank lengths or a hook and a half off the back is is no bad usually. So just take a couple of wraps back, get that in, see how we're sitting. That's no bad, I don't worry pressurise it too much and then as I always say it's far better to taper your cut and get a nice smooth underbody so I'll come in with a tapered cut and I'll tidy all this up now first flash in the tail, I just want a couple of pieces of silver flashaboo I'm using holographic silver uh, I like the look of that a wee bit better but plain silver is fine if you like it, if you prefer that by all means that's the original oh, sorry we'll tie the, we'll tie the flat wing in first and I'll put this, the feathers on top of it so as normal with a flat wing got a bit of fluff off my hackle dub it onto the thread just come back up and I'll push that down to make my wee pillow don't worry if it sort of runs around a wee bit, it's no the end of the world it's all hidden so we've got that soft soft base there for my hackles now the in striper moon uh, the, the, this fly it's just two saddles I'm going to put three in I like, I like to have the short well, this is actually a neck, but I like to have that short, upturned feather. Uh, I think it makes it makes the fly swim better, and I still would like to have too long. 
coming out the back so get that in my loose turns as always position it and sneak it in in the that couple of mil and that will make it sit flat in the pillow and I'll trim away the waist and I'll get my two two saddle feathers just make sure we're in the right order length I mean it's up to you you can make these really big you know um, and you have quite a large fly quite a long fly uh, that's still fairly you know there's actually not a lot of material in it it's still fairly castable um, which is ideal you know if you if you get fish that are eating large mullet it's perfect same as before a couple of turns then pull that feather in we'll just check it against the the one before A wee bit shorter there, so we'll just go back, lengthen them up. That's fine. Secure that one, and you can see there that like that feather below sort of pushes up on it a wee bit. They start to kind of fight each other, but this um, this is what makes. Look, I mean that. That wee feather there, that really makes this tail dance. Um, it's just so much livelier because the, 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 what would you say, the weight of the feather, or the downforce that comes off of the, the feathers above has been like pressed back up against. It's, it just hovers, or flickers, um, very, very lively in the water. So. Just get that one in, give it a little pull, and to size, something like that's nice. Good enough for me, close enough. And there, lovely, lovely flat wing. Again, trim that. And now we'll come in with a couple of strands of silver. I'll let I'll let these be longer than the hackle. And I'll just put two in. We fold them back. I've got let the two wee strands just stay in the tail. I don't mind them in there. Um, up to yourself, you know. You can remove them if you like, but I think they can add. When I, first, I mean, this is quite a large fly, right? Let those two wee strands are not doing any harm. It's not too much for the size of the the size of the fly. Body is a silver braid, so we'll just catch that in, secure it back. Again, as I always do, I leave a wee space so that when I wrap the braid, it doesn't interfere with the tail. Just use the rotary function on this. But before I do it, before I wind this, I'm going to saturate it all with head cement. And then use my rotary function and I'll come down this body get my nice silver underbody oops what's happening there we go and that as I said before in other videos the cement squeezes into that um, braid, gives you a lovely, strong body because it's all impregnated with the cement. It's all like a single. It sets up as a single unit, you know. Um, to 
to always like to fold it back. Just move away the waist. And then I'll get my white tail if I could see it. That's it. I like quite a fine a fine hair for this and I'm going to tie my belly and keep it nice and long. And you don't need a ton because there's a marabou collar going on here which will add a bit of body and volume. So, turn this over. Take away any really short hairs. And then I'll come in and I'll let this be, as I say, I'll let it be long. Um, coming nearly, not quite, but nearly to the the length of the, the grey. Couple of turns, get a wee pinch, tighten it. Nice and clean. Get it locked in. Make sure I have a like it, that's fine. So, as I always do, I like to cut this at an angle. By lifting the material and having a flat scissor, get a nice smooth angled cut. And I'll tidy this up. Now, when you go to do the wing, it's up to you. Uh, you can Decide when you want to put on the marabou. I like to put all the bucktail, then the marabou, then the final saddle feather. But maybe you prefer, you know, you put it on the put the buck the marabou, and then have the bucktail wing separate. Or you could even do the bucktail la uh, the the marabou last. It's entirely up to you. Um, so to see what you like the look of. So I'm going to get some another bunch of white. And again, this can be quite long, the same. Clean out any short hairs. Let this be long. Similar, look, not too heavy a bunch. Fairly sparse. Just make sure it's evenly distributed. Right, you don't want like when you look from the top or the bottom, you want to have about the same amount of hair on either side. Right, you don't want one side to be heavier dressed than the other because then it'll, you'll have problems. Uh, when you fish it, it'll, it'll drag, it'll pull to one side. So I'm going to come to the front. Just sweep any wee cut ends, tidy everything up. And come back, right? Because you need space, and you can just compress that. You can make your bucktail tie in nice and long. And then we've got some purple, and the purple you want half as much purple that you want as you had the uh, white. Keep it, keep the purple quite sparse. You could use a lavender as well, I suppose, if you want it, if you like this at a paler fly. I'll just come in with this purple here. On the top. Couple of turns. Flatten it. Right, so it sort of blends to the blends to the white and then oops. Try to avoid snapping your thread, I'll just lift that bunch away. <sighs> Happens. But you don't need to worry. You snap your thread, you just... Don't panic. Just got a clean edge in it. Feed it back into the bobbin holder. Tidy up. Turn that way. Now, just 
just have a wee look in case anything's moved. But that looks okay to me. Again, let's grab that bunch again. I just sat it down on my desk, it's fine. Just make sure it's sort of not moved a bit too much. And then I'll offer it in. Three turns. Make sure you've got a nice spread on top. Another couple. And come in and trim them close. And then again, I'll tie back because remember you want that, you've still got the marabou and the saddle hackle to go in. We'll take a couple of strands of blue flash abu. Just stick them in. I don't need these to be longer than the saddle hackles and the tail, the silver. Three turns down, fold it back, tidy up. Trim that away. Now, I'm going to add some head cement. Press it in, take away the excess, and that will be nice and dry, ready to go by the time I have picked out my marabou. Fair. You know, I like to have them like a decent feather, no too many broken pieces in it. Um, no any really. Sort of medium thickness of feather barb. Right, no too fluffy, no too skinny. This one's quite nice. So, now if you look at it, you can see there's some rubbish, right? So just take the rubbish away. You're not going to use that anyway, so get it. Get it out of your way, right? That's uh, you're left with like this sort of usable feather. You only need a few turns, a few wraps. So I'll sort of come to where the feather barbs start to shorten. I'll allow a wee bit of taper, but not too much. And then. Just moistened that there. Three, three wraps, and I'll fold this back. I'll take a, two or three wraps, and I'm not going to let go of this marabou tip. And right, we'll cut it away. Okay, that all secured then, and I'll come to the front. And then it's just a case of wrapping this. Fold it. Fold it as you go. So that the stem is making contact with the, the the thread base, right? Rather than the fuzz of the marabou. That's two. And just sort of see, like, different plumes are kind of different thicknesses. It's me into my third. I might just go. Okay, come up to a bit there. That's fine. So I'm into my th nearly four, three and a half there. I'm just folding that over the thread and then I'll clean that away so it's easy to tie in. Anything that's on the stem that I don't want, I'll just strip that away. That's a bit I could maybe fold it back, but it's just a wee bit thick, so we'll just cut it. And that's really fluffy and sitting there. We just moisten it, and it will sort of behave for you while we while you finish the fly. Now, obviously, when the fly's in the water, it's going to resemble the dry fly. Right, it's going to be alive, but it'll just be moving more. It's not going to look like this, slicked back. So to finish it, I'm going to just use a black saddle feather. 
a nice straight oh, and I like a wee bit of web at the front um, maybe even some of this sort of marabou like feather no too much though I just like that sort of extra wee bit of width and sort of depth of colour that you get from the, the web. So we'll take a couple of loose wraps. Just pull it in. And all the material below it will sort of force it to sit flat anyway. And lengthwise, I don't like it as long. Right? I want it to be shorter than the white. I've got 25 mil an inch of white feather behind the tip of the black there just as a, a guideline for you on this fly anyway it would obviously be less if it was smaller I like to fold this tip back because I don't have a long tie in I mean it's, it is secure but oops it does no harm to no, I don't like that I've got a wee bit of black fluff dirtying up my head there so I'll just see what it is it's just all for the feather. I mean, God, the fish don't care, but I'll take it away. So, come back to this. Down the front. Just secure it in. That's it. It's in, it's going nowhere. Right, it can't pull out, it needs to break. And then I'll just knock the top off it. Now the marabou sometimes kind of fankles up in it and all that. But you can just press it with your thumbnail and that'll make it sit nice and flat. What actually I think is happening is the marabou sometimes comes to the top. There you go. And there you go, that's it. Basically the September night, put a nice wee clean head. coming up from the front you'll see the black cackle through that white thread once you varnish it a wee bit but it's not too bad trim away again I like to wet the marabou before I varnish just to stop it kind of catching any of the varnish and soaking it up and you'll see that thread as soon as the varnish hits it you'll see the colour of the hackle kind of shining through on the top of the head there I think, I think you can see it but there you go, that's it September night it's a great flat wing pattern catches fish all year depending on where you are and I mean like all flat wings don't just think it's for striped bass um, anything that eats a bait fish will eat a flat wing so I hope that was useful I hope you enjoyed it if you did remember to give me a thumbs up below and I'll see you for another one take lines guys bye